Labour have completely disgraced themselves over Gaza. Their behaviour has been completely unforgivable, and that matters for two reasons. One, it's allowed the Conservatives to get away with murder, literally. The government can keep arming and backing Israel as it butchers the people of Gaza, knowing that they won't come under domestic political pressure for doing so. Secondly, Labour is the inevitable government in waiting, given the total implosion of the Conservative Party. So what's the latest outrage on the part of Labour? They've suspended the left-wing MP Kate Osamore, one of the only black female Labour MPs. Now, bear in mind, they've already de facto booted Diane Abbott, who was the first ever black female MP elected, while other Labour MPs who are white and not left-wing have been treated completely differently, like Neil Coyle, who racially harassed a journalist and reportedly had a complaint of sexual harassment against him. He had the whip restored and sits again as a Labour MP. On the other hand, judging by what's happened to left-wing MPs, they won't restore the whip to Kate Osamore and thus ban her from standing as an MP. And it's not just her, we'll come on to that. Now, what is Kate Osamore's crime? In her weekly newsletter to local Labour members sent last Friday, she wrote, and I quote, that Holocaust Memorial Day is an international day to remember the six million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, the millions of other people murdered under Nazi persecution of other groups and more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and now Gaza. Now, first things first, Holocaust Memorial Day exists to remember the Shoah, that is the Nazis' genocide of European Jews and other genocides. In the words of the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust itself, it is an international day on the 27th of January to remember the six million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, alongside the millions of people murdered under Nazi persecution of other groups and during more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. Now, the reason I say this is some might be under the impression that Holocaust Memorial Day exists solely to remember the Nazi genocide of the Jewish people, but it doesn't. Now, last week, the International Court of Justice, the highest court on earth, accepted South Africa's case against Israel for the crime of genocide as being plausible. So Israel is now on trial for an alleged genocide. Among other things, what that ruling now means is that it is a legitimate opinion to believe that Israel's onslaught against Gaza is a genocide because the case was not dismissed. Now, there may be those of you who do not believe this constitutes a genocide. If that's your view, what you can no longer do is dismiss the claim that there was a genocide as an outrage, as a disgrace, as somehow being beyond the realms of acceptable opinion. So Kate Osmore has been suspended for adding what the highest court on earth now considers an alleged ongoing genocide to the list of genocides to remember on a day which exists to remember genocides. So that's now an opinion, that's an opinion clearly, which is unacceptable in the Labour Party. We've already seen fellow left-wing Annie McDonald be suspended for saying, and I quote, we won't rest until we have justice, until all people, Israelis and Palestinians, between the river and the sea can live in peaceful liberty. A call there for peaceful coexistence. Well, you're out for that. Support mass slaughter and apartheid? No problem at all. What is an acceptable opinion as far as the Labour Party is concerned? Well, for a start, supporting what is now officially considered as an alleged genocide and specifically supporting war crimes, which I'll come on to. This is part of a general pattern, which I predicted back in October would be the case, that those who would be driven from their jobs or their positions threatened or facing harassment, silencing, demonization, would be those opposing the mass murder of Palestinians, while those uh, supporting this slaughter would be treated as respectable and moderates with no impact on their career whatsoever. Now, to be clear, Keir Starmer, who became leader on a pack of lies, pretending to be left-wing, committing to a range of policies he didn't actually believe in, like nationalisation, higher taxes on the rich, abolishing tuition fees, and indeed Labour being a broad church, is looking for an excuse, any excuse, to purge left-wing MPs. And his crew is using the mass slaughter of the Palestinian people, which the Labour leadership has aided and abetted, to further that cynical, factional end. Now, let's just go through this particularly sordid episode in Labour history, shall we? On Friday, Labour's Shadow Foreign Secretary David Lammy tweeted, Labour has been clear throughout the conflict that international law must be, must be upheld, that the independence of international courts must be respected and that all sides must be accountable. Labour must now comply with the orders in the ICJ ruling in full. Sorry, what, what was that, David? Sorry, would you say that? Labour's been clear throughout the conflict that international law must be upheld. Is that what you seriously wrote? Seriously? It's just a barefaced lie, isn't it? You shouldn't throw the word lie around willy-nilly. But unless David Lammy is completely oblivious to what international law is, unfortunate, given he's a lawyer by training, and in which case he shouldn't be Shadow Foreign Secretary, then he must know that what he tweeted 
is not true. Let's start with Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, sadly, shall we, who said near the start of the Israel onslaught the following. I'm very clear. Israel must have that, does have that right to defend herself. Um, and Hamas bears responsibility. A siege is appropriate? Cutting off power? Cutting off water? Well, I think that Israel does have that right. It is an ongoing situation. He defended Israel's right to cut off water and energy to civilians. A straightforward war crime. It's in violation of the Geneva Convention, to be precise, Article 33, forbidding collective punishment. That's for a start. Now, indeed, in the ICJ judgment, the court specifically referred to the Israeli Defence Minister, Yov Gallant, cutting off water and energy and other basic supplies as part of a siege which Keir Starmer there backed on national radio. And it was, of course, justified on the grounds that Palestinians were human animals. The ICJ cites that as damning evidence. So, from the outset, the Labour leader supported war crimes, violating international law. It gets worse. Let's listen to David Lammy himself on the 15th of October when asked about Israel's forcible displacement of the Palestinian people in Gaza, which led to virtually all the Palestinian population being displaced from their homes. Do you support the order to move them or not? The order to move them? Well, yes. clearly. Just yes it, or no? It's not a yes or no, Victoria. I'm, I'm hoping one day to be Foreign Secretary and, and achieve diplomats, so it's not a yes or no. Why not? Let me, Why let not? Me, can I answer the question? Please. Very simply. This is a war situation. War is ugly. Yes. Very, very sadly, people die. We have rules, and those rules mean that you must minimise death. Now, you know, and I know, because Netanyahu has said that there will be an invasion shortly. Against that backdrop, of course it's right that civilians must not be in harm's way, and an order has been issued. Okay. I'm glad that that order has been extended. Of course I am. But, this, but what I, the point I want to get across is that it's hugely important that we minimise the loss of human life. Right. And anyone well, let, let's seeing talk, those let's scenes talk about from Gaza, it's horrendous law. for those people that are facing that at this point in time. So he refused to say whether he supported forcible displacement or opposed it. That's a war crime, a very clear war crime, which David Lammy could not condemn. Is that being clear throughout the conflict, that international law must be upheld? Obviously not. It gets worse. Let's listen to Emily Thornberry, my own MP, Labour's Shadow Attorney General, who will therefore be the top lawyer in the next Labour government, when she was asked about cutting off food, water and power to civilians. But, well, I mean, I don't They've know. They've already cut off the food. I, mean, I hear yeah, what I you're saying, but what I'm saying is that... Is that against that... international law? It's really simple. Sakir no, what is doesn't sim seem to think it is. What is simple? is that whatever actions are taken by a democracy, it has to be done in, in accordance with international law. Do, and we have so heard you tonight from, the, prime, from, the, from the President of the United States that he has been on the phone to Netanyahu and both of them have agreed that democracies need to act in accordance with international okay. law. Pause there, if I may. Do you think cutting off food, water and electricity is within international law? I think that Israel has an absolute right to defend itself That's against not terrorism. That's the question I asked. It is an answer to the question that, that you've asked, and I think it's an appropriate one at this time. Why won't you answer whether you think it's in line with international law or not? Because I've tried to answer, and I've tried to, 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 I've tried to say that we've already heard from your previous guest about what might be happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're now on day four. And so they, we hear that there are, there are troops massing on the border. There may well be an incursion. In the, in, immediately before an incursion, then, as the permanent representative have said, that it might be appropriate in those circumstances for there to be the sort of action that we've heard about. And then the, then the, then the invasion afterwards. I don't know, because at the moment we're in the middle of a hot war and, and Israel is in the middle of defending itself. And we have to stand with Israel, just like we would expect people to stand with us if we were the victims of terrorism as well. There we go again, refusing to condemn this overt war crime. Also back in October, Labour's International Development Secretary, or Shadow International Development Secretary, Lisa Nandy, also refused to say whether Israel breached international law when it cut off power and water to Gaza. Do you think Israel breached international law by cutting off water and power supplies? Look, I think this is an extraordinarily complex and fast-moving situation. There are 200 hostages. And what's the answer to the question? Well, look, Israel has the right to self-defence and it has a duty to secure the release of its hostages. Sure. But my question but was, to, my question was, no, my question was, international do you... law is upheld. Right, and so and my question 
question is, do you think Israel has, have, has breached international humanitarian law by cutting off water and fuel supplies? Well, in the last 24 hours, we've seen water, medicine and food enter Gaza. It is in very limited supply at the moment, but I am hopeful that we'll be able to amplify and scale up those efforts urgently. There is a very small window in which a, a an Israeli government that is responding to fear and pain in Israel and the Egyptian government as well, who have serious concerns about the opening of the Rafa crossing, may be persuaded with the help of the United States and others to not just allow aid into Gaza, but to allow safe passage through Gaza to reach people in the north. And, and forgive that's what me, we've I, got to focus on. I, I am going to ask the question again. Do you think Israel breached international law by cutting off power and water supplies? Look, I'm not going to sit in your studio and grandstand and tell you that I'm going to make big pronouncements. It gets worse and worse. Israel also coincidentally succeeded in kicking down ICJ, placing it on trial for genocide off the headlines by suddenly releasing about 12 members of UNRWA, the UN agency's task for looking after Palestinian refugees, and the main humanitarian agency in Gaza, were allegedly involved in the 7th of October attacks. Now, we don't know what crimes they're accused of. They haven't been tried or found guilty of anything. There's had no justice process, in fact. And the evidence comes allegedly from interrogations by the Shin Bet, Israel's military intelligence, who used torture. So that's unproven and unspecified allegations from a state with a track record of lying through its teeth against members of an organization which employs 30,000 staff. So that's 0.04%. The result? Countries such as the United States and Britain have suspended their funding of UNRWA. What does that mean exactly? UNRWA is the main humanitarian agency in Gaza, as they say. Gaza is on the brink of famine. Its people are deprived of necessities like clean water and shelter. Its healthcare system has been destroyed. In its provisional measures, the ICJ has just ruled that Israel must take immediate and effective measures to enable the provision of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance to address the adverse conditions of life faced by Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Well, that's now impossible with UNRWA being defunded. As they've said themselves, they won't be able to continue assisting Gaza beyond February unless funding is restored. According to the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food, Michael Fakhri, before this decision, famine was imminent. Famine is now inevitable. So what does Lisa Nandy say as Labour's shadow International Development Secretary after the Conservatives pull the plug on Gaza's main humanitarian agency during an epic humanitarian catastrophe? She says, allegations this series demand a serious response. As the UK rightly ensures that aid is never used to support terrorism, we are seeking urgent discussions with ministers to ensure ordinary Gazans can access aid. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza cannot wait. That is a mealy mouth way of supporting choking Gaza's main humanitarian agency in a humanitarian catastrophe which will inevitably kill large numbers of Palestinians and wrapping it up with meaningless humanitarian platitudes. Because there is no substitute for UNRWA in terms of getting large amounts of humanitarian aid urgently into Gaza as per the ICJ ruling. Now, it gets worse. In a previous video, I spoke to Dalal Nader, a Palestinian man whose family was killed in Gaza after he was thrown out of a Labour meeting in my hometown, Stockport, like he was a bag of trash. A Labour shadow business secretary, Jonathan Reynolds, and Labour's deputy leader, Angela Rayner, just stood there. It later transpired that Angela Rayner, who has refused to vote for ceasefire and refused to speak out against the massacre of Gaza, previously met Dalal, posed for a picture with him and told him, I support Palestine, Palestine must be free. Then does nothing as Palestinians are massacred and then she watches this Palestinian she previously met, who she personally committed to, to support Palestine, get aggressively thrown out of her meeting like he was less than dirt. What do you even say? What do you even say? Ready stood for leader, Keir Starmer promised, and I quote, to put human rights at the heart of foreign policy. That was pledge number four, by the way. Just one lie amongst so many other lies as he duped Labour members into voting for him on an entirely false prospectus. What actually happened in the end? The Labour Party under his leadership ended up both overtly backing war crimes and refusing to condemn war crimes. And backing an Israeli onslaught which is now being investigated as a possible genocide by the highest court on earth. Doesn't bode well for them, does it, in terms of running the country? Bear in mind that the sort of people surrounding Keir Starmer and those who are dominant in the Labour Party are now the sort of people who think the Iraq war was a good thing and would do it all over again, even knowing what they do now. What a terrible state our democracy's in, with so little to choose from. 
either a conservative party, which has wrecked the country, which is enabling a potential genocide, and a Labour Party no longer committed to reversing the damage inflicted by the Tories on the country, and which also cheers on a potential genocide. Bleak. But all the more reason for the rest of us to speak out, and loudly too. Please like and subscribe. Do share this video. Keep the show on the road on patreon.com forward slash ownjones84. Listen to the podcast. I'll speak to you soon.